Hello again, everybody. So last week, I tried to challenge myself. And as the title probably says, I tried to do one of these League of Legends splash arts in whole, like a pretty long study. So I gave myself about six hours, you know, a normal evening or afternoon or whatever it's called. Just a pretty tight time limit for an illustration on that level. And by all means, I didn't expect anything to go as planned. And I also didn't expect it to look remotely like the original by the time I finish. So as you can see, I started with a very loose sketch just to have like the basic proportions in and everything that needs to be there to make it look like the original splash art. Once that was done, I tried to implement a little bit of the face and if you know me, then you know I struggle with faces. I don't know why, I've drawn like a thousand faces and all the time I just think they look a little off. And they usually do, but that's just how it is. Of course, after making this loose sketch, I tried to make a really clean line work. Something I can definitely work with because I didn't want to have the experience as if I was studying it and just blocking in everything and it'll be good for the fact that I'm just studying it. I wanted to have like the real experience of having to make a loose sketch and then a really neat line work so everything is in order. Now my traumatic experiences with faces aside, I started with the line art of the face because I knew if I would have nailed that then I don't have to bother with it after I've done the line work of everything else and I just have a clearer mind. Which turned out pretty good. The clean line art for the face turned out very well, I was happy with it and moved on to the line art of everything else. Keeping to the simple rules of stuff that needs to be important has a little thicker line, stuff that is towards the viewer has a little thicker line and you know keeping the detail to a minimum in areas that don't need to be attractive for the viewer's eye. I stretched the little thing that she sits on for compositional reasons and got rid of the little robot that is flying on the right side, like our right side from her in the original. While doing the line art, I always kept in mind that I would have to eventually separate everything into a few layers so I could use clipping masks to efficiently render the stuff that I needed to render. And because I was pretty much pressed for time, I used the symmetry tool and and whatever I could find to make the workflow go a little bit faster, you know, like having the weapon upright and drawing it like that to save some time, which turned out to be an awful idea because I drew the weapon completely wrong. But that's just how it is and I gotta live with it now. It didn't occur to me that the weapon was kind of wrong until I put it in place and saw that something looked a little off when I looked to my reference. With the entire thing still being in the line art phase, I didn't notice it too much and thought it was no big deal. It turns out it was kind of a big deal because the weapon actually looks very much different. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the little circle, or in my case the giant circle in the middle of her staff is very much smaller in the original than what I drew. I don't know what I was thinking, but as I said, it is what it is and we gotta live with it now. Moving on from that, I made the line art for the little spaceships that are flying above her that are really like connecting the composition of the entire sky with the figure. Also in the symmetry tool because it was just much much easier to do that. And I just skewed the line art for the stuff that needs to be in perspective because of the six hour deadline that was slowly but surely moving closer and closer. With the spaceships all where they needed to be, I was practically done with the line art and I could move on to blocking out everything. I made a separate layer with a block of paint that I could use as a clipping mask for almost everything that had a different color or a different material. Bigger and simple shapes like the little floaty things that she has on her hips I took into one shape just for the sake of time. I blocked out the sky a little more realistically because I just wanted to have a little more atmosphere while painting. It didn't really help the final painting in a great way. However, it felt better to draw on something that already looked like something than to draw on some flat colors. When it came to finally block out the things in color and go into more detail with little smaller shapes to be an entire clipping mask to their own, I settled for very neutral in light colors to be the flat colors and to have one layer each on multiply blend mode for the shadows, which at first 
felt very time consuming and not like a good idea but in the end I'm pretty glad I did that because in the end it was quite the time saver to have all these clipping masks and the multiply blend mode to have the shadows overall already done. I colored in the little bit of the sky that I painted earlier also for the mood and to see how the colors react in accordance with the background. I was obviously referencing all the colors from the original reference that I had on my second monitor. I didn't go for the most accurate look in the colors, but more of the thing that I felt like was right. Because let's be honest, if you do a League of Legends splash art from scratch, you don't really have a one-to-one -one reference to pick or reference colors from. When it came to coloring the weapon, it was the first time I really realized how much off I was in the weapon design. But with the time limit that I gave myself and basically no time at all to go back and rearrange everything, I just took the L and kept on going. It's not like the weapon looks absolutely horrific, however it just doesn't look like the original, which was fine by me. Now after it was lunchtime for me, I sat down, looked at the colors and thought to myself, now it's the time. The rendering shall begin. And it was about time to start rendering, since I already lost three hours in just sketching line art and blocking out the colors. So with much confidence, I went in and started the rendering. As I said earlier, I used a multiply layer on the clipping masks for all the things that I had blocked out earlier in the different colors to make my life a little easier and to shade a little more efficiently. I also made a copy of the line art, turned it to multiply, and applied a hue and saturation filter on it to make it red, alongside with a Gaussian blur to have it like sift through the colors. I don't know why, but it just lets me see the shapes of the colors actually a little better than when I have a flat black line art on top of them. The rendering has started with the face, obviously, because if I know I have made the face acceptable, then there's a huge load of my mind and I can render in peace. And after a few attempts, the face actually looked pretty decent. So I went on and shaded the entire skin area and painted in the direct highlight coming from the sun to the right. After that I moved to all the other layers and made a multiply layer, shaded them accordingly so everything looks a little more coherent. After that I introduced some color variation in the hair and her dress and painted in some hard reflected light from a second light source on her leggings. It was a little tough to balance the highly reflective leggings with the skin areas so the detail wouldn't be just all on the legs. However, having rendered the face almost completely gave that focal point a real boost so I didn't really care about it that much. In the meantime I already shaded a little bit of the spaceships that are flying above her just so they weren't just some floating graphic shapes with chemtrails attached to them. Coming to a little bit of an end, I looked at the reference and saw all the little details and what I wanted to have in my version of it and started adding them. Working zoomed out or often zooming out to look just how the entire picture looks when I did something. Just so the good composition wouldn't be made to not just because I felt like I had to do something or not do something that was in the original. Last but not least, I looked at it from afar and just adjusted some major value stuff that I thought looked wrong and went over the entire picture with some color variation and effects. And that is the entirety of how I drew this within 6 hours. At the very end, I even saw that I had even 15 minutes left. And obviously I could have rendered something out in these 15 minutes, but I called it a day and I was pretty happy about it. Now the question is, would I do something like that again? Probably yes, but with a much higher time limit, something like 10 hours or so, because I feel like the drawing part was quite nice and I really enjoyed having very nice and neat line art to work from. However, making such neat line art just takes time and this shaves off a lot of time that you will not get back when rendering, because rendering just takes an ass load of time. If you like this kind of stuff then I would really appreciate it if you leave a like because that actually helps out a lot and obviously as you can see there goes quite a lot into making a video like this. Not even counting all the hours and hours that I need to record this 10 minutes of audio. Now without further ado I wish you happy drawing and until next time.